Hey everybody, it's Jake with Lee White and Will Terry. We're we, all from what? We have no idea what we're doing. What? And we have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> Listen, I'm in the middle of starting this thing out. You don't interrupt me while I... <laughs> okay. One, two, three. <laughs> Here we go. Hey everybody. So let's draw. Uh... <laughs> you know what I realized? What? I should have what? started it out because you don't have all the images in front of you. That's, That's what I was thinking. Is we want to look at all the images first. Just to yeah, kind of got to look at all of them. Jake. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jake, what were you thinking, man? You asked who wanted to. Which screen are you seeing? Oh. It's yours now, Will. Well, what are you seeing on it? It was there. I'm just watching people leaving left <laughs> and right. <now. laughs> What what do you see on my screen right now? Your screen came up for a second, but I lost it. Oh, Are you seeing sorry. it, Jake? It's gone. All right, how about that one? Are you getting anything? There yes, we go. Now I see now I see the images. Ah, okay, good. Okay, sorry guys. Okay, we're just gonna run through these really quick um, because they're really cool, and I want and while we're doing this, it's we're getting more images each time, which we expected. And there will probably come a point where we don't have time to go through all of them. But let's just click through fairly quickly. And Pause. Uh, just Pause. Really quick. Just explain what this is and how it works, and then we'll go through the images. Just super quick. You, you do it. You're smarter than I am. Come on, James. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I, you, you're good. You're good with that. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll be quiet. Just Third Thursday. What we do is every third Thursday, we critique images that have been sent in uh, from a prompt that we've given out the month before. So uh, after third Thursday, after the third Thursday of the month, we give a new prompt. And this month's prompt was, and I was supposed to have it in front of me, and I will have it in two seconds here, and it is... Amanda was so excited for her first day at the cottage until dot, dot, dot. Okay, so remember that as you're watching these images. Amanda was so excited for her first day at the cottage until, okay. Um, and I'm glad you did that, Jake. I'm glad you slowed it down because when I was looking at these um, uh, as a group, and I think it was when you and I were looking at them, Lee, um, and I'll just I'll just click through as we're as I'm talking. One of the main things that we're looking for is uh, probably for me the first thing I'm looking for is the concept. Does the illustration uh, il actually illustrate the concept? Um, and of course that's up to a lot of personal interpretation, um, and we're going to all bring our own biases to that. One of the things that I I think with this prompt though is it's an emotional piece. You have action pieces, uh, you have descriptive pieces, narrative pieces uh, of, a, of a setting, and then you have emotion pieces. And one of the things that I noticed with this is that some people, I think, didn't quite understand the prompt because the prompt basically says, Amanda was excited for her first day at the cottage until something else happened. So that means that her emotion changed from being excited to something negative, either fill in the blank. It could be disappointment, it could be horror, it could be sadness, it could be what else could it be? We anything. I mean, as long as it changes, I mean, there's a definite change of emotion there, and you want to see that. Um, it's not just like a happy. Yeah, that's right. Um. Okay, so I'm just flipping through these. And again, some very creative ideas. Um, and another thing is very creative on the, the techniques used. Um, the, you know, a lot of digital pieces, but a lot of traditional work as well. And it was very hard for us to choose. Did you say something? Oh, somebody's got a baby. Let's see. Let me mute that person. There we go. Every now and then it'll, oh, wow. unmute, it'll unmute somebody for no reason. I don't yeah. know. 
Hey, while while you're talking, I'll handle I'll handle mutants. You don't have to worry about that. Okay. Anyway, uh, just some very very creative pieces. So I guess what I was looking for first, and you guys might be looking for something different. What I'm looking for first is does it fit the assignment? Does it fit the concept? Is the concept creative? Um, and then secondarily, um, does the illustration, uh, you know, how is the illustration designed and critiquing it basically on um, the content of the illustration principles, how's the craftsmanship, how's the color, how's the value, all those uh, design principles that go into coming up with a pleasing design. And so... And there, you know, we, we don't always get these right. One thing that I might also mention is that uh, we're going to pick, we have three winners tonight. Um, we're going to critique five, um, actually six, because there were, it just worked out that there were six that just really shined. And then um, three of them are winners, and the, those three people can't uh, win again. And so the, hope, the, the good thing about that is it increases your odds, um, if you didn't get your piece critiqued, they, theirs won't take that space anymore. And so you were constantly eliminating the good people, which is kind of backwards, isn't it? <laughs> if you're good, get out of here. <laughs> oh, you don't want somebody winning every month, though. Right. That's right. We might, You know what we might do is at the end of the year just, just say it's, it's a free-for-all. Yeah, that's Ooh. fun. No. Or maybe a battle of the winners. Yeah, we could we could change it up at any time, huh? Yeah, maybe we. Yeah, everyone who's won are only avail or can only submit. I don't know. We'll mess around with it. Anyways, should we uh, should we critique? Yeah, I'm just gonna get Let's through. Critique. I think we're almost to the end here. She she posted one last last month, didn't she? Go back. Which one? Tamisha, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one's cool. I, I recognize the style. Yep. <clears throat> That's a good thing, starting to recognize uh, certain mark-making tendencies or colors or whatever. Yeah, well, it was mostly the um, just the, the, the design sense. Hmm. It's cool. Well, that one's nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. That's the worst when that happens. <laughs> okay. So, um, since I'm... I, I just want to say I love that strawberry one. <laughs> I know it's not one of our winners, but I love the concept. Yeah, it's great. She's in the strawberry cottage, everything's going good, and then she gets picked and eaten. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome. Yeah. Okay, so since, since I'm sharing my screen, I'll go ahead and start first. And uh, I already... This was one of our uh, finalists, and this one is... Uh, Tara Reichards. So is she with us tonight? If she is, you can un if if she is, you can unmute her. I don't think so. I don't see her on the list. Um. Okay. So for Tara, I'll just go through this. I already uh, kind of did a little bit of work on this. There's three main things that I think would make this image better, and that is um, a stronger focal point, uh, adding texture and craftsmanship. And I'll just go through those real quick. Uh, so I actually made a little thumbnail down here of this image just so that when you when you zoom out and when you look at a th little thumbnail you can actually uh, focus on the whole image at the same time and so that's going to allow us to critique it a little bit better when we when we put it next to the, the finished one that I did so here's this is these are the changes that I made and uh, let's see here this is the final thumbnail so when you're when you're looking at them and I'll just talk about the changes the first thing is one thing that I think you should try to avoid is is putting a lot of light right next to the edge of the image. And what that does is you're drawing a lot of attention because you're almost like spotlighting it over here by lighting it from the left side. And you're saying that there's something really important over here, except there's not. It's just the edge of the, the house, the side of the house. Um, there's nothing really going on over here that's important. So what I did was I lit the opposite side so that that becomes the fallow side of the house. Um, it becomes non-important, it's in shadow, and it allows you to focus more on the middle of the image. 
another thing that I did was I kind of darkened the trees a little bit. Um, I love the background. I love how the background lays back. Um, it, there's nothing back there. It, there's not, no strong details back there that are um, drawing our attention. The background was handled expertly. Um, but what I did was uh, darkening the trees, and the reason for that is, um, it, again, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of things going on in these trees that are that are interesting if it's about the trees. But because it's really about this dog, I'm trying to tone down some of the extra details and allow you to focus in on the dog. The thing, another thing that I didn't put in here, um, I didn't write it down in the list, but for the storytelling aspect of this is. You've got the dog and you've got the shoe covering up the dog's mouth right there. And there's, we can't really tell what his emotion is. We can't really tell, is the dog glad that he stole the shoe? Is he, is he feeling sad? Uh, is he feeling like he was a bad dog? Is he, is he, has he been castigated and, and shoved outside? Or is he just wreaking havoc and he's, he's happy about it? So I took an attitude with that and basically saying, you know, he's kind of happy that he did what he did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice change. It's subtle, but it's really nice. He's a bad dog, you know. Um, <laughs> but he's happy. He's proud. Hey, well, can I, can I add something to the point you made a second ago about um, darkening the trees? For all of you guys, I noticed that there was quite a few um, people that that are, seem to be struggling a little bit with value in organizing the values in your image. And one easy way to simplify that is just ask yourself a simple question when you're making something in the scene, and that's, is it a dark shape on a light background, or is it a light shape on a dark background? And keep it really simple that way, and that way you can watch out, you, you, you don't have to resort to gradients all over the place, which then starts to um, diffuse the, the whole image and diffuse your lighting. So you want a real simple graphic read, so dark on light or light on dark. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, and the way that the way that um, Tara handled the trees is it's really nice. And we're not saying that you did that wrong. What we're saying is for this particular illustration for the communication, it might just be a little extra flavoring that's not necessary in this illustration. But in another one, they might be just fine like that. Um, and that's one way of handling it. There's a million other ways. You, you know, you don't have to necessarily go with dark trees. But Lee's right. Think about it as far as dark on light, light on dark. So you could have light trees, then dark in the background a little bit more, you know. Um, the other thing that I did was I, I moved the dog into the foreground in, in dark in that area and like he's in shadow. And then what that does is it just simplifies the composition again. If you look at this little thumbnail down here, this one actually has less lights and darks than this one over here. So this one's more, is going to look more, um, uh, the, 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 if you take this to the extreme, it's going to end up being camouflage, right? So camouflage, nothing sticks out because everything's important, which means nothing's important uh, because everything's the same. And so the more value patterning you have, the more towards camouflage you get. And what you really want is a simple uh, light on dark, dark on light kind of a value pattern. Um, and I added texture because when you, you know, one of the things you also want to avoid is everyone when you're working digitally has access to the airbrush. And so it's probably the last texture that you want to use in your images. Um, simply because it's so easy to use, that means that everybody out there when they start out is going to be using that. So that's going to make you look more amateur because you're using the airbrush. So you've got to, got to figure out a way to add texture. We have videos on that at SBS on uh, using the texture brush um, and painting with other textures like watercolors and different things like that. There's a million things that you can do, but that's probably the, one of the next steps that you have. And then the last thing that I put on here was craftsmanship. And if we zoom in, which I'm not going to do right now, but if we zoom into some of these windows and, and that, um, just taking it to the next level and, and zooming in and, and fixing some of these lines, um, you know, there's areas where you've demonstrated, like this side of this house is just beautiful, but and, and, the, and the, the, um, the deck here, but then when we get to the window, it, it doesn't match. It looks a little clunky. So that's when it's the, small like that, go ahead and use the lasso or use the path tool if you have to, just to get a clean shape. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, okay, great. So there's our first one, and uh, who's gonna go next? I'll go next. Okay, Lee. All right. So. All right. Show my screen. And Jake, you need to move that mic away from your mouth. You sound Sorry. Like Vader. Sorry about that. 
Uh, is my screen showing yep. up? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, so this one is uh, Misty. I want to pronounce that last name correctly. McKeithen. I hope I'm saying that correct. I think I saw her in the list over here. Maybe she. You can unmute her if you want to. Well, yeah. I think she's in, she's in the list. Misty, you're you're unmuted if you want to defend your. Hi. Honor. Was that correct? Are you there, Misty? Yeah, I'm here. Can you oh. hear me? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. It's McKeithen. Oh, okay. That's close. Uh -huh. Okay, so uh, so I, I liked her image immediately, just on an emotional level. I think it comes from from uh, uh, Charlotte's Web. You know, there's a little bit of that action going on, but changes the context and uh, turns it a little bit sinister. And I love that kind of concept. I use it a lot in in, in my work. So I definitely responded to the overall um, concept of it. Uh, so I looked at it and I started. I, I'm, I'm doing this critique a little bit different. I'm trying to feed few different things and I went ahead and did a uh, starting from scratch um, based on the ideas of what I was seeing here I didn't want to start to cut apart her image and darken an area and lighten an area just because there's a couple of things that I want to talk about um, so this is this is I went down critique so the first thing was like will said earlier could the, could the, is the message ringing true and right now She's definitely going to be excited. She's in this house. I'm not sure right now if these are supposed to be spider webs back here because the texture is just too clean over the entire image. But, uh, but I'm assuming she's in there. She's cleaning and she's excited to be there, I guess. And then all of a sudden this happens, but then they're friendly. So it seems like that would just be more exciting because all of a sudden, I don't know, it's it just it confused it a little bit. So I played around with maybe changing what's written in the message. And you guys, uh, I'd like to get your opinion on that when, once I show you the image that I made. Um, to see if that's better than high, but just something that, that I brought up. Um, so I first started looking at the details, just the overall composition, the overall uh, subject matter that's in there, and to me the first thing that, that I noticed is the details feel a little bit generic. Um, once I googled cottage, um, because I don't, I mean everybody hears the, the term cottage, but I don't necessarily know what it, exactly what it means, and I always start every job this way by saying, do I am I assuming the right thing about what a cottage is? And there's a million different cottages. There's beach cottage and you know mountain cottage. And and what I know, what I look for is the common denominator uh, of what makes a kind of a cottage interior. What details should I include? What should I exclude? And what I came to notice after looking at all these images is, for a cottage, this is a great one. Um, for a cottage, there's a little bit of rustic, almost a, a cabin feel, but then there's some refinement on top of it, and that became a really interesting uh, detail. And I saw it over and over, and so that that just and and then visually, that's a really interesting thing to start with uh, in terms of designing your own space. So this so that's one of the first things is I want you to get better reference. Um, these feel. It feels just so basic. We got we got the U-Haul boxes down here, but we want to see something coming out of them. Um, I like the plates. That's where you started to go into that uh, uh, little bit of that cottagey feel, the, the the Victorian mixed with the cabin. But then it, it's not repeated anywhere else. So definitely want to uh, bump up the uh, level of detail in the um, in in the style uh, of all the furniture and all the stuff that's in there. Um, composition uh, felt. A little bit centered to me, and there's a lot of dead space on the side here because our focal point and our subject are so close together. And so that was something that I started thinking about, just like, is there a way to use the image a little bit better and to have the viewer um, move around the space a little bit more? Um, I noticed, here, let me make a new layer real quick. I noticed that you've got all this orderly, uh, Order, really orderly detail. What I like to do is once I have an order to something, I try to say, okay, what can I play against that order? But, you know, we've got all these lines. Hold on, let me make that a little darker. So we've got all these verticals everywhere, right? And they're very, very um, rigid, just straight up and down. And then that's what's happening also with the, uh, with the spider webs here. And so I would like probably uh, use the web as a place to play with organic against structure mm. and start to get a little bit more design there too. So anytime you have hot, I try to say, where can I add cold? If I have round, I try to add straight. Uh, and it's a real nice way to, to, to balance your composition in terms of just, just basic graphic design. 
Um, also, watch your spacing. And look how symmetrical these distances are, or even to the corner of the room. It's amazing. If you've ever tried to make a night sky, you'll all, it, it almost always starts where you make every star the exact distance from the other star. It's hard to make things really organic. And so you really want to play around with, with, uh, with trying to uh, introduce a natural kind of spacing to it. Um, the lighting was the last thing that I, that I noticed that it probably could be improved here. Um, I like the glow here, and, and it's definitely ringing as a focal point. But um, let me move, move this. Uh, but the light seems really ambient. It's just, it's kind of generically glowing, but it doesn't seem like there's a light source, and I feel like there's a little bit of a missed opportunity there. And so, I, so again, I took all these ideas and I started drawing, and I made man, one. Whoops, my frame moved for some reason. I can. Okay, so this was just a quick sketch that I did, trying to fix that stuff and so and I just grabbed one image uh, online just so I could start to use this over here and start to interject some of those uh, some of that stuff into my my drawing let me zoom out just a little bit because I did this really fast and it's it's kind of rough but I tried to include all that stuff I also tried to keep the same same kind of focal point that she had um, originally because I didn't want to change the design too much um, but so first thing in is, is getting that real organic kind of architecture in there uh, I changed the message to leave instead of hi. I like, I like that. Mm -hmm. Kind of an interesting moment, right? I, 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 I tried to picture who this, this girl is. So here's her suitcase down here in the lower left. So maybe she just got to the cabin um, that day. She's excited to kind of spend some alone time and, and read and do all the stuff you do in a, in a, a retreat or a cottage. And uh, she's reading, and then she looks up and sees that. And so our focal point is here. And so I tried to put something a little bit on ominous by having the one spider there, but then I wanted to repeat those elements in other spots, but not compete with my main spider. That was one of the things that I saw down here, is that each spider takes the, uh, up the same amount of um, focal point. They're all the same size. Oh, uh, hers is on top of mine. So yeah, so each of them takes up the same amount of space and the same amount of uh, um, room. They're the same shape, and so you want to vary that. So I have one main one, and then uh, and and then some supporting cast basically. Uh, try to get that real rough look of the interior, and then some real fine elements like the china, the the plates, um, mixing a, a stone. Um, a facade at the bottom mixed with Victorian wallpaper on top. Um, the other thing that I did here that I, I like to do in my illustrations quite a bit is if one person's noticing something, so she's reading and she just looks up and sees this thing, and then she's got to make a decision, you know, what, what happens after this moment. I like to have, if there's two things, in this case a pet in the image, I like to have the pet doing something else other than also noticing the thing. Um, any thoughts there, Jake? What do you think about that? I, I, yeah. Do you, do you like to mirror that in the characters or not? I personally, um, you know, I always, I, anytime you can like do something with the pet that adds a little bit of um, interestingness or, or humor or anything is, is always good. And whether that's them exactly mirroring the, the character, you know, the main character or them doing something completely opposite, it just depends on you know the the each you know piece by piece. So yeah. you know, I noticed with have, my, I always sorry, like, I always like, like when, I, I was just gonna interject. I, I always like it when the pet is doing something opposite, or the pet is mm -hmm. is uh, keen on something that the the main character. Oh, is. That's what well, see if if I would have had her looking down and maybe she's if she's reading the book, then I have the pet looking up and seeing the thing. Right. Um, in this case, I mean, pets are typically, at least my pets are, they're, they're, there's two different options for, the, for my pets. And they're either super on top of it, like they're, like they're barking or, or, or trying to get at anything in the house, or they don't notice anything a stranger can come in and they don't even wake up. Mm. And so that's kind of the personality that I gave this one, that all this stuff's starting to happen. The cat's completely oblivious. There's all these little spiders all over the place, and the cat's just totally useless. So I think that's kind of funny. Um, but it's, it, it, I just wanted to open up the dialogue of each thing that you put in there as a character, 
and you have to say, okay, what is this? How is this character contributing? Um, what's the overall read of the character? Um, so anyway, that's a that's kind of how I how I saw. It. Oh, the lighting using the using the fireplace as an opportunity down here. We got that nice fireplace, but it's not helping at all. And I figured, you know, it gives me a nice chance to use that real direct lighting and uh, and you know make some angles across the page. And you can you can design some really nice shapes just by placing a light in the image and then casting shadows across the room or moving that light around. So, uh, so, so that's kind of how I addressed these, these points. There's a million different ways. I should add, by the way, that this would just be step one. I would do a bunch of these. I don't know. I mean, the, the prompt is Amanda was so excited. In this case, I've made my character reading. So is that the actual, you know, does that hit the text like it should, or do I need to make her up and doing something, something else? So, so this would just be a starting point, and then I would do, you know, 20 or 30 of, of these. And I, I'd like to keep them, I should add, if anybody is interested, how these things start off is just like that, just a real rough kind of thing that might be going on. And then, uh, and then I lower the, the value of that and then just sketch right on top of that. And I try mm -hmm. to keep, I just wanted to talk here about keeping your tones really simple. That's me turning off the, uh, the line layer. And you can see how simple that value structure is. It's real clean. There's not a single gradient in that. It's all just flat tone. So it's just a way to That's check really cool. and make sure your values are, are holding. I think one of the most important things you did was add a lot of flavor with the, by getting good reference. That's so important. Yeah, and it's so much fun. I mean, I, I, I realize how bad I am at designing things from scratch. Once I see a really beautiful reference image, I, I, it's just like such a breath of, of – it's a sigh of relief because now I've got <laughs> – you know, a professor, some professional architect or designer built this. I don't have to learn to be a interior designer. <laughs> right. Borrow, Just borrow, and choose and the pull. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, I realized something, Jake, is that Lee's making us look bad. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? Yeah. Well, that was a that was a five star critique. I'll say that. Yeah, that's like oh, nice. a, a filet mignon critique there, buddy. <laughs> well, I'd like to ask the ask the students watching. Do they? Is it, it? You know, I didn't go back and change this image. Is it helpful to talk about these same points in my own image, or would you rather? I, I don't know. I mean, it's the first time I've kind of done a critique this way, so mm -hmm. I hope that I hope it's resonating with them too. We'll switch over to Jake and look at those comments coming in. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, uh, Lee. Good one. All right. So I have Rob's uh, Rob Smith's uh, piece here, and um, uh, the concept here I think is is pretty solid. She was excited to go to the cabin until she saw that um, it's full of these nasty little bugs, and I think that's great. I think it's perfect. It reads well. It's 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 uh, nothing needs changed there. I, I I think. Are you guys cool with that as well? Uh huh. I was just um, gonna have it, unmuted Rob there so he can talk if he wants. Okay. To. Yeah. So if you have anything to interject, Rob, just go for it, and I'll 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 keep going on with the critique. Um. Compositionally, though, things get a little a little. Mm, muddy on on the the left hand side it's very clear on the right hand side but on the left hand side it's a little a little rough and um, and I feel like um, I, I feel like all the pieces are in place it's just the the lighting for it is is making it hard to see the pieces so what I did was I went in and I just lightened up that background and what that did was helps these bugs that are in the foreground really pop so you could see them uh, you can kind of see the, the the problem right away, mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I think what that helps, what that does with the with the composition is it does, um, uh, what that lighting does is it does help us see this this composition a little better. What might be fun though is to maybe, um, uh, oops, what's going on here? Something. Oh, it's okay. loading all your fonts. It's annoying. Yeah, why would you do that right away? <laughs> okay. That drives um, me crazy. So there's a there's a compositional thing, or 
you know, where it's, it's there's a thing called variance, right? And and what happens sometimes is is people fall into this snowman effect, where their designs fall into this large, medium, small, and it's very predictable, and it's very very expected. And what I want people to do, and what I want you to do, is to train yourself to vary that up, and to draw your snowman like that, where you you switch just those two, and it becomes such a a much more interesting and more dynamic thing. And what you've got going on here is this the snowman effect, where it's just kind of all, um, uh, you know, be, it just becomes predictable, right? So what I would do is leave this guy big, put your little guy here, and maybe put your medium guy there. Or and what that does is it. Can I can I up? can I give you a suggestion? This is uh, <laughs> no, no suggestion. <laughs> this is a. This is. I want to see you draw something real quick, Jake. What if? What uh -huh, if? Yeah. That last guy. Next opportunity is like waiting by the door, and she's so because she's looking to the left, to her left, uh -huh. and to uh -huh. the right. I always think it's fun to have the bigger threat is unseen. You know, like what if it's down there yeah, on like the floor? A big. Yeah. The big guy, like right here, uh -huh. like. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe not that big, but you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, well, I have an answer to to that that as well. And I, and going back to this this lighting thing, I, I think one other thing would be to darken these guys a little more. So you you lighten up that background a pinch, you darken these guys, and already you've got something that reads a lot better. Wow! Yeah, mm -hmm. big improvement. Yeah. Yeah, and then lastly on that front is changing her eyes. If you look there, right now she's like looking this way, and it's just the eyes have so much power. Uh, it's amazing that such a small thing can have so much power with us as humans. We look at the eyes, we're we're drawn to them. We're like, you know, this is millions of years of evolution and DNA just telling you to look at eyes and to read what a person is saying and it happens in art and these eyes are pointing you off the image and just by doing that um, and let me yeah and 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 having them looking towards this main deal here um, it uh, it draws you in and back and forth there's like this tension here and it just your eyes bounce back and forth back up back and forth between her and what she's looking at um, and then you could still have this guy here who's sneaking up in her. You get Will's, Will's thing where she doesn't see the thing that's closest to her. Uh, I think that works. Yeah. Lastly um, uh, is, is the, um, the design of her needs a little more uh, work to her. And so if I, um, I'm just going just gonna to do a little draw over on her. You guys see that still? Yeah. Um, um, her pose is just a just a little awkward, and and what what I feel like is there wasn't enough underdrawing happening there, or or if there was an underdrawing, you sort of lost it when you when you went to painting, mm. and so you see here like this leg is just it's not it's not functioning on the same like plane or level as the other leg, so. So usually what I'll do is I'll draw the little square that her, her legs need to stand in. And sometimes I'll draw those feet like how they should be. So so she's got one foot there, and she could have the other foot like coming like that. And then we'll draw, draw her head. This, um, this arm could probably, it, it feels like it's pressed a little, like it's folded against itself a little much, and this forearm gets really long compared to the to the upper arm. So I think what could be happening with that left foot is that the heel is supposed to be raised. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about that um, in in the original illustration. It looks like the heel is supposed to be raised. If that's the case, that bottom point right where it touches the ground needs to be straightened so we can t yeah there we go see that point where he made that bottom line straight yeah. so that's how you can tell that, that that legs lifted I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like that in the original illustration I just yeah, that's yeah that's one other um, way to do it yeah 
All right, so I would just open up this arm here and watch the proportions, and then um, I think design-wise, going back to the just the the fun shapes, you know, the snowman principle um, of doing something like that with her hair, like maybe you you have something you know big here coming out like that, and it's just just bigger, funner shapes. That's how I that's how I'd approach her. I think the bugs are fine. Um, and that's a really, tell, overall, it's a really nice illustration right from the yeah. beginning. A lot of really yeah. good things going on. I love the color balance. Yeah. All right, one thing that's in my terms take of, on that one. In terms of detailing, there's one thing I'd like to add or, or ask you guys your opinion. Is is her hands, both the hands being up like in the, uh, the home alone pose basically with the hands on the cheek screaming? Um, since she's coming to the cottage, do you think there could be, like, maybe she's opened the door, she sees all this stuff, and, you know, if she's carrying a suitcase or carrying a bunch of stuff in her hand, all that stuff's going to spill into the room, it's going to drop, and it's going to add a ton of energy right around her, um, and it gives the hands something to do. A lot of people struggle with, what do I do with the hands? Um, and so, <laughs> that's, one, that's one thing you could do. <laughs> But anyway, you could have her carrying stuff and have all that stuff spilling out, and that can add a little bit of dynamic uh, energy around her. That's yeah, I think she. I, <laughs> you know, if, if all it fails, just add a firearm. That's all you got to do. Every video, that's why every video game does well. You must be. You're, you must live in Utah. <laughs> For real. That's awesome, Jake. <laughs> thanks, go. Jake. Thanks, thanks, Rob. Rob, that was really good. So thank you. Thanks a lot, you guys. I really appreciate it. Yep, you're welcome. Okay. All right, I'm done with this one. <laughs> All right. Who's next? <laughs> um, and uh, gonna go ahead and mute Rob there. Oh, for some reason he won't be muted. Oh, that's because that, that's his offline ghost. <laughs> Can you see my screen? Oh yes, so you're you're yeah. okay. You're looking fine. Okay, so this is Valerie Beans, and my gosh, this was so so nice in so many ways that I did decided not to disgrace your image by doing a full paint over. Or either that, or I'm a slacker, right? <laughs> I don't need. I don't think it needs a full paint over. No, it doesn't. Sure does. That's why. No that's why I didn't. Um, the color harmony is awesome in this picture. And what I mean by that is um, her colors are blending together. And I, I like the analogy of a stew where all the flavors start to meld together. And so she's got orange running through this whole thing. She's got green running through this whole thing. She's got yellow running through this whole thing. And she's got blue and purples running through it. And even there's some blues and purples mixed in here. That's one of the best ways to get your color harmony. You've got these repeating. She used the same purple here as she did on the bowl. And what that does is it ties the whole thing together. And it's kind of like when you get dressed in the morning. You know, you don't you don't pick colors that are clashing, different colors everywhere, unless that's the statement you're trying to make for that day, right? I think you dress like that sometimes, Jake, right? <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> but usually we pick clothes that match, and that's that's basically what she's doing here. But so the thing, the main thing that I think. There's, there's really two things that I have, and then if you guys have extra things, you can um, you can add those to it. I feel like if this is going on down in the cottage, and this is the unexpected thing, then her I feel like her expression is off, and I feel like her eye gaze is off. I feel like she's looking straight ahead, that there's something over here that's more interesting than bears in your house that are that are eating <laughs> your your food and spilling stuff, right? I feel like her intuition of where sound's coming from, when you hear sound on the left side or the right side, her eyes would be looking over in that direction. And maybe her gesture would be a little bit different with her hands and what she's doing. Maybe she's holding on to the stairs and peeking around the corner. So I came up with this as, a, as, a, as a, an option, which is more mess, uh, more stuff spilling, so that it's more of a spectacle. Let me turn off this other layer here. Uh, and... I put the stairs over, kind of going this direction, so that she could kind of peek around the corner and, oh, and kind of cool. see what's that's happening. That's really cool. In, instead of instead of coming down to greet someone at the front door and going, "Hey, you guys want to come in and join the bears?" You know, <laughs> it's it would be more uh, like, "What in the world is going on downstairs?" 
And really, that's, yeah, that's fantastic. That's the only thing that I've I could really say that, and I think more mess because um, mm-hmm. it it really is a nice piece. And I I would say, you know, if Val is Valerie here, by the way, did you check to see she's not in here? But anyway, if she's not already getting work, I would say her work is is to that point where she should be sending it out there and getting work with it, you know. Um, yeah, this is beautiful. I could easily see her getting work with this. But again, the thing that separates, and, and this is something we all have struggle with, uh, no matter whether you're a professional or whether you're on your way to becoming professional, is really um, the, the the storytelling and those those little subtle things that you choose to do in your illustration um, to get into character and put yourself in this character's shoes. I am going to, I'm trying to imagine this whole scene happening. There's bears downstairs. If you have stairs in your house, go upstairs and pretend that you're coming down. And what are, what are you going to do? Um, sometimes we jump to the first idea that we have and it, it doesn't describe the scene as well as it could. And, and so that's kind of my, uh, my take on this one. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I like I like your um, your composition. Just changing that camera angle a little bit. It's nice. But even if you don't have, uh, we had a we had a comment a second ago saying uh, they disagree with the critique because uh, it's supposed to be the moment right at the until when we get a sneak peek of what the character is getting has yet to discover. So the char- he's basically saying the character is blissfully unaware at that moment, and, and they're that? getting ready. Uh, let me scoop. I'm just kidding. No, and it, it's, again, it's, it's up to it's up to interpretation. And I would say to that, um, what when you're given a prompt or when you're given an illustration to do, um, you're, you're now we've got somebody that needs to be muted here. There we go. Um, when you're given a, a a piece of text to illustrate, it it, it it's not necessarily one split second of time. There could be a little little before it, a little during it, a little after it, but it's kind of all at that, uh, about that time. So uh, again, it's mm-hmm. up to personal interpretation and uh, these are... Hey, Will, can you, go, can you uh, go back to the original illustration? Yeah. I agree with what he's saying. Um, if, if you did want to keep the character totally unaware and, and, and use this as a starting point, not let her be aware of sound or anything like that, um, I think that's a cool idea, but I think... Um, what Will's making a valid point is that she would have heard, I mean, this is going to be making a huge uh, sounds and a mess downstairs. You're going to hear things banging around. So if you want to keep her uh, blissfully kind of unaware, you need to talk to those points in your character design by adding what I would do if that's what I wanted to do to, to make her seem is put the big headphones kind of like yeah. uh, me and Jake are wearing right now. Put the big headphones on her, put a backpack over her shoulder. That will give her hands here. something to do so she can hold on to the backpack as she's going down the steps. Because right yeah. now the hands, again, seem like they don't know what they're supposed to be doing. Mm. So she could just be off in La La Land. She's playing her favorite song, and then we're going to hit that, and then that becomes more believable of a scenario. Or another mm-hmm. option would be the camera goes behind the bears, looking past the bears to the window where the girl's coming up the walkway to the house. So the bears are making all that noise, but it's inside. She's outside. She's about to get the surprise of yeah. of coming in. Okay, great. So Lee, you up? You up, Lee? I guess I'm up. Okay, here we go. Share my screen. All right, you guys seeing me? Yeah. Yeah, you're good. Everything good? Okay. Uh, so this one is, I believe it's pronounced Maggie. I'm hoping that's correct. I always get done tricky names. Um, this one was beautiful. We we talked about this a little bit before uh, before the critique started, me and Jake and Will, and uh, just love it. One thing I want to point out that's working really well: overall color balance is really solid. We got a little bit of warm right on her, and all, only thing that's warm is uh, is these areas, these things that she wants to play with. Um, so it's all all the warm is concentrated. Everything else is is really cool. That's a great uh, color balance technique. Uh, the line the line works very very consistent. Everything looks like it belongs. Uh, I love the pose. Um, there's, you know, I was talking to Will, and he's like, "Do you want?" He was asking me if I want to critique this one, and I said, "Not really, because there's not much, to, there's not much to critique. Uh-huh. It's a, just a really nice piece." Uh, 
so then we started getting into some nuance kind of stuff. Um, Jake had a point that he was, Jake, you were saying that we should switch the character to be looking in towards the window. Was that? Yeah, yeah, what that's what saying? I was saying. I'll go ahead and do that. I, I disagreed with that, but let's go ahead and do it. <laughs> so you're going to do something that you disagree with? I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it terrible just so I'm right. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, where is it? And that changes the story now. Now she's she's sad about the rain and something in the house. I should put the bears in the house. <laughs> they, won't, they won't let her in. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I I, I kind of liked it the original way because I feel like it's an environmental concern. She's concerned about the rain, and she's looking out of frame, and, uh, mm -hmm. and that makes more sense to me. What about uh, if you, what if you slid her over to the right, flip her back? Can you un, can you go back to the original? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'll let and Jake's Jake's over here working right now. Yeah, I'm working on <laughs> my good. version. He does his own little espionage so what, while you're. Uh, what did you want me to do, Will? Just, can you slide her to the right and and no, no the other way. Uh, slide right. her over to that side, or maybe yeah, more into the middle, and then and then so she's not because that was that was Jake's problem was she's take her gaze is taking us out of the the frame left. Right. You know. I kind of I kind of liked that, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, just, I, don't know, I think you're wrong. No, no. It's pretty much definitely you're wrong. We need, we need those, uh, those street photographs, <laughs> you know? Now, now, what if her head, go, instead of an upward gaze, what if her head comes, what if her head comes uh, down instead of looking up? She's just kind of mopey. Let's see how this will work. Oops. What do you guys think? Who do you think is right, Jake or Lee? And we'll put the we'll put the Street Fighter graphics in there. Well, they, they've got to see my everybody, my image before they. Everybody knows that Jake's was wrong. Lee, Lee, Lee's right. <laughs> you haven't seen your image yet, Jake. Maybe we shouldn't. Yeah, you you can't vote until you see my image. Maybe we shouldn't. Oh, right, so. Gay's looking down. <laughs> it was. It was a really awesome image, and yeah, so I mean, the fact are... that we're arguing about it means we don't know what we're talking about. What do you guys think? The kind of mopey, mopey look? I like that. Nah. Yeah, mopey's good. Mopey's good. All right, so this one we'll just call it open for interpretation, but badass. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> okay. Yeah, very nice, uh, very nice word. Okay, Jake, do you want to go ahead and take this screen then? Yeah, I'll take the screen. Okay. So this is this is what I was thinking. The mopey. So you did the mopey thing and you moved it over. Yeah, just just um, just switched her I in the window. I would move the window down. I still like the original. Yeah, I would if I were gonna do that, Jake, I'd move the window down behind her even more. Like mm. centered almost so that it's not as right now it's like her and the window. And I think the window should lay back and not be as prominent. Yeah. I mean we could we could we, you know we could you don't have to just, do that. Get, just get rid of a window. Why do we need a window? Need a window. <laughs> just draw one in there. Just draw one like let me take your hands and make you do that. <laughs> just, just draw it. Like, Maybe there's like a little window <laughs> no. up there. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, my my turn for this. One. <laughs> yeah. Um. So this is awesome because it's a comic, and everyone knows that comics is is like the most superior uh, storytelling art form. So I'm glad you guys gave this to me. Yep. We gave and that one to you because it. you're in comics and because you would mm -hmm. do a much better job of that than we would. Yeah. So here's the cottage. What do you think? Dad's showing the little girl, and she's like, oh, my gosh, it's a cottage. Wow. 
She runs up to it. She's like, flowers. She opens the door. Oh, it's got a living room. Oh, it's got a kitchen. She goes upstairs. Oh, beds. And then Dad's like, what's wrong? I thought there would be three bears. So this is really well done. I, I, I think it... Um, I think it, it it reads well, and there's some really good stuff. Yeah, um, it's really good. Uh, your your initial image has, it's like an establishing shot, and it's big, and it says, here's the cottage, and we've got them here, and it introduces everybody. Um, we get close to see her reaction, which is great. Um, this image here, I thought, could be, even more, uh, just a little bit clearer. The main thing with comics, and, and I would say by extension illustration, is you must sacrifice everything to the god of clar clarity. Okay, so you all the prettiness, all the beautiful rendering, all the the colors and everything have to um, have to promote clarity. And if they're not doing that, you have to get rid of them. And so, when this one, we've got this weird arm angle. Uh, you know, is she touching her chin, um, or not? Is she falling over? Is she laying down? It just doesn't read really, very well. So I was thinking, it, all you had to do here was just do a silhouette of her running up up to the steps, and and that would be super clear. It would get the point across. And you wouldn't have this awkward pose that you have underneath there. Um, this is great. Look at the flowers. Um, opening the door, it could be a little bit clearer there too. I, I, I mean, I, I get the, the close-up, but maybe we want to see something um, a little, you know, a little more, uh, a little more clear. And, and and that's like a full body thing where she's um, where she's opening the door there. I'm just gonna uh, do this to make make it even clearer on these two. So overall, you're just talking about clar clarity of pose is kind of your underlying mm -hmm. statement yeah. there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then we come in here. This is perfect. Um, we see her entering the room. Uh, what, what's nice and what's important about comics is that everything's reading. All the movement is happening right to left. It's advancing us. She starts on the left side. She's, you know, her her destination's on the right side. She's close up on the left. She's moving to the right. Um, she's entering in left to right. She's coming into this room, looking left to right. It's fine that you're mixing it up here, like. You know, she's flipping to the other side of the house. This is perfect. Um, this is working because you have the banister there. So we know she's going upstairs. I think that's great. And the fact that you have small, small, big is really just nice and appealing. And then you go back to small. That's your, you're doing the, the snowman thing right. Uh, this panel here is, it's good. It's good. It's just um, it's a little cramped. Mm. So maybe maybe what you do. I'm sorry, I got allergies, what so about, I keep sniffling and stuff. We know. It, what, what about dad silhouetting like girl moped in front of him, and him facing her? So so I think you go back to this type of thing. You have um, you have this. You know, dad's pose again, and this could even be silhouetted, or it could be something like that. And you just have her, like, you know, like mm -hmm. moping. And I think this reads the clearest. And and you've got, you know, uh, your character small, small, big, small, small, big. And then this is great that we get close up, we see her emotion, and she's like, I thought there would be bears, but I'm ching. Um, and so, uh, and so that's that's just my thoughts overall on on the, you know, this this approach to comics. There's a couple other things that are a little a little off design-wise. Like your characters are perfect, 
this house is just kind of wonky with the um, with the perspective on it, and that you know if if we had time, I would go over a, a better you know a better way to draw that in perspective. Perspective's a little weird on 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 this this room here, but everything's working fine. I think I think it's not major. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's my critique. A couple of things I thought was that um, one, and this is Lee and I were talking about this earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm dragging you into this, Lee. Here's a couple of <laughs> a couple of children's book guys who don't know a whole lot about comics. We were wondering, yeah. could this or should this be done in fewer panels? And then the second thing, and I'll let you address both of these. The second one was her character looks a little bit older and maybe. A little less girl-like in a few of the images. Oh, uh, like for the age, like the size yeah. of her, she looks really young in some of them, mm -hmm. in the distant shots, and then the closer-up ones, she looks a little older. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's hard to do to keep that consistency down among among different panels. I mean, us as book illustrators struggle with that always, and so definitely make sure you're on character, have a good working character sheet before you go through the pains of doing a whole panel. Would you agree, Jake? When you're doing comics, do you have a do you have a character sheet with a bunch of yeah designs? Yeah, I do. Yep. Yep. Even when I'm doing uh, children's books, like right now, I'm doing a um, a book called Little Bot and Sparrow, and right in front of me is this image right here. These are just all the sparrows that I pulled off of Google Image Search. Which we just to keep me. If you're watching this in the video afterwards, you won't be able to see this. Yeah, that's the benefit of showing up live. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so that that that's that's huge. And I think with her, just it's it's simple enough on here. Um, uh, it's just making sure, like, grown-ups have big honkers, big honking noses, not honkers. <laughs> I, I thought that was like a subconscious thing. You wanted to get rid of the nose. <laughs> 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 Grown-ups have big honking noses, <laughs> and sometimes big honkers. I'm sorry. Okay, anyways. <laughs> You're struggling over there with the tissues and everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, anyway, so so it's just a matter of, like, you know, you could just do something small like that. Maybe her eyes are a little, little bit bigger, like they're bigger in these other ones. Um, and so maybe just... And watch out for anatomy. If you're going for a younger kid, which I, which I, I do all the time in the in the kids books I'm doing, you want to avoid anatomy, like what Jake's covering up right there. Those little bitty uh, overlaps of your line give her a, a a chin, and that's what starts to happen when people age. Uh, you want to avoid the collarbones and Adam apple and the the sternocleidomastoid muscle coming down from the base of the or the top of the neck down to the collarbone, just avoid all that anatomical detail if you're going for a younger uh, look to your character. You want to leave all that stuff off. Yeah. Yeah, she looks a lot younger. There are bigger eyes, smaller nose, smaller mouth. Anyway, yeah. okay. comics-wise, to answer your question about the panels really quick, um, uh, this is perfectly, totally fine. The average uh, panel count on, on a on a comics page, like an American comics page, is is five to six, and uh, clearly, clearly it's five to six. And I don't think, I mean, everything here is is great. Like you don't want to skimp. You want to show the the chairs, the bowls, the beds. You want to show her going upstairs. It adds a little bit extra. You want to show her close up of her reaction. You want to show her running to it. I love this moment here where she's just like relishing it. It's it's perfect. I, I just realized something. Lee was totally wrong. <laughs> That's wrong. That statement is wrong. <laughs> what was I wrong about? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that was all Will. On I was panel. disagreeing with him the entire time. <laughs> uh, one thing I want to add uh, about the wonky house. Um, yeah. that, remember, I, I, I talked a little bit about it last time since I do work in weird perspectives and, and there's no vanishing points or anything like that. You guys can do that if you can stylize however you want to. Just make sure it's consistent. And that's the only reason the house looks off. I kind of dig the house being weird like that, but since it's not supported anywhere else, it looks out of place. And so remember, yeah. you can stylize all you want to. Just make sure it's consistent. Yeah, that's a good call. Awesome. 
Okay, so right. our three winners are drum roll. Uh, okay, Mag. I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Maggie Milcheva, Milcheva, and then mm -hmm. Tara Reichards and Valerie Bean. And so if you'll contact Aaron and his. You wanna, do, you, hmm? do you have those images? Do you want to show those images? Absolutely. No, I do. Absolutely, I want to get those on this video. And so I need to switch it out real quick here. Um, yeah, so here's Maggie's. And uh, do you see that yet? Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. the rain. And then um, this one is Tara. Tara's. And then Valerie's. That's great. And, uh, yeah, so just contact Aaron. His email is svslearninfo. Is that right? svslearninfo at gmail.com. I don't even know the right email. Yeah. I'll put it in the chat. And he will set you up with $30 credit. And that's all we have for this critique. Thanks for showing up, you guys. Hey, wait. i got to give the prompt. Am I going to give the prompt for next time? Do you have or it right we now? Wait? I do. Oh, okay, yeah. I was, I was kidding about pressuring you because I didn't ask you about it yet. So. No, I, I sent an email, so, so you don't know what it is yet, Will? No. All right, so I I'm, I'm good. I didn't, I didn't have to get approval. <laughs> so this is going to be a little bit different uh, because, because the, the last two have been so specific on a single phrase. I'm going to throw out the any spread – from uh, Jack and the Beanstalk. Oh, cool. Mm, cool. So it's a, but it's a it's a story everybody knows really well. There's a lot of points of, of excitement. There's a lot of points of tension, and so I want you guys to really think about what what moment calls call gets your attention, and uh, and and you know the the moment you can illustrate the best. So we're going to have a lot of variety on the next one, but uh, yeah, I'm excited excited to see it. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. Uh, okay, great. So we'll put that in the blog and also on Facebook, on our Facebook, SVS Facebook page. And then there's a question. Do those who got critiqued get to enter again next time? Yes. If you didn't win, you can still uh, enter to be a winner again. So, uh, yeah, keep going. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing our entries. We're a little short on time because this we're announcing this a little bit late. So uh, third Thursday is coming up for July. So get the sooner you get going on it, the, the better it'll be. And I think that's all we have, right? So it yeah. is on the normal time. We got a question that it's 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 on the third Thursday. It's not being thrown yeah. because we moved this one, right? Are you guys going out of town? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we're, I'm here. Okay, <laughs> third Thursday means the third Thursday. Okay, awesome. Sounds good. <laughs>